Welcome to the Americas video blog. I'm Jim Jocko, your host. And with me today, Peter Abramovich, Vice President Insurance Solutions at Numerics, part of the Client Solutions team. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Jim. So, in our video blog, we've been talking about capital markets issues, Basel III, mm -hmm. managing counterparty risk, CVA, DVA, the whole debate around that. Uh, we've been focused on um, the OIS discounting issues and margining. Uh, but today, this week in the news, EU pushing back Solvency II yet potentially again. And we haven't talked about Solvency II on this vlog or really uh, in a while, right? It mm -hmm. came out how many years ago? So I thought today maybe we started the conversation a little bit of a primer, Solvency II, what is it? Let's remind everybody and then we can move from there. Sure, sure. Uh, Solvency II is a major overhaul of the European regulations for the insurance industry and it's supposed to replace the existing regulatory regime. Uh, Solvency II is mainly trying to achieve four main objectives. Uh, number one is to further standardize uh, regulations of insurance industry across the European Union. Uh, number two is to increase protection for policyholders. Uh, number three is to encourage market discipline and transparency for insurance companies. And finally, number four is to strengthen the solvency protection system, especially when it comes to, to the enhanced risk management techniques. So three pillars of implementation. Why don't you walk us through those pillars? Sure. Uh, there are three pillars to Solvency II. It has both quantitative and qualitative requirements as well as market discipline. So in order for the companies to successfully um, comply with these regulations and also to be able to compete in the marketplace more effectively, they will need to, bring, uh, to build their own uh, sophisticated internal models that analyze risk. And probably what's even more important, they will need to be able to uh, show the, their view to regulators. So when you say uh, analyze risk, bringing capital markets as well as liability management together in a single framework, very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, is that one of the drivers behind this delay? I mean, I believe, you know, we're, we're looking, it was 2012, and now we're looking out to 2015. Right. You know, what, what are the drivers behind this delay? Sure. Uh, well, there are several drivers behind the delay. Um, I think this is exactly the, one of the biggest issues that faces Solvency II currently is the fact that it looks to be delayed even further, as you just mentioned. And most of that is due to the fact that in the most recent meetings between the European Commission and the European Parliament, they couldn't resolve some of the critical issues. For example, they couldn't come to an agreement on the treatment of long-term guarantees within life insurance and pension products. So this, uh, so like you said, originally uh, the Solvency II regime was due to be implemented uh, this year in 2012, but then last year it was pushed back to January of 2014, and now the delays of one year or possibly even longer are being reported. So, uh, and that's generally not good news for insurance companies that are that have been on the road of implementation and preparation for this regulation for a long time. And, uh, you know, they invested a lot of money, resources, and time into this project, and now they will not be able to see the practical benefits for hmm. several years. So one, one, you know, if you look at back at cost estimates, it was billions that have right. gone into in terms of compliance. Let's jump across oceans mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. The U.S., clearly different regime. You have the NAIC. Every state has its own regulator. Right. But obviously looking, uh, for lack of a better term, across the pond, mm -hmm. um, if you will, to see what's going on. How are the two regimes mirroring each other, and where is the U.S. today? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the U.S. has also had its share of uh, various regulations of the insurance industry. And one of the more recent examples of that is the Solvency Modernization Initiative. And this initiative has been set up to, one, review the current U.S. Uh, solvency protection system after the financial crisis, and two is exactly just you just mentioned, uh, in order to, to gain solvency two equivalents. So the U.S. Uh, eventually is trying to move uh, in accord with the European regulations. Historically, the U.S. regulations uh, around statutory capital requirements were formula-based, which didn't take into account all the risks and all the complexity of insurance products that the companies bring to the market. In the past decade, however, there's been a shift away from this formula-based approach to a principle-based approach for capital and reserves. And this uh, principle-based approach uh, uses risk analysis and risk management techniques that uh, capture the uh, the risks embedded in life insurance and annuity products much more accurately than the original rule-based approach. Hmm. So essentially, uh, not just better capital management and solvency, but also increased complexity exactly. in, in order to manage your business. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm going to wrap here for today because I want to, as we move forward in this, we're definitely going to get into more granular elements of capital accuracy modeling, asset liability modeling in upcoming video blogs. But I figured today this is a good starting point. Let's get on top of the news, and I'm sure I'm going to get you back in this hot seat once again. Great. Thank you for joining our video blog on Solvency 2. I'm Jim Jocko. Please follow NX Analytics at, uh, on Twitter, as well as check out our regular blog on numerics.com for regular updates. Any ideas and suggestions, please feel free to email me or email marketing at numerics.com. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for having me.